And now, the series finale of The Diary. The following takes place on August 15th, 2015. Dear Diary, this may be my last entry. I am sitting by myself at a park bench, awaiting sunrise. The weather is much better than it was last night. I am currently in the middle of today's mission, so I can't stay long. My sister is waiting for me. Although, I do want to let you know what has happened and why I'm out here, so she can keep waiting. It'll build up the suspense. Yesterday, I took Craig with me, and only I returned. She was still chained to the ground, unable to move, so she obviously had questions. Where is Craig? Craig won't be coming back. He was hit by lightning. Is he dead? I don't think so, but he's on his own now. I don't really care about Craig. It's you that I'm interested in. I want to play a game. What is this, Saw? Raquel McConaughey. Up until now, you've lived your life treating other humans like they are disposable objects. Like they are obstacles in your path. Like the boyfriend who pissed off a hiking trail into his bed and Craig lied to validate your alibi. There was a picture of the two of you on your phone. I'm pretty sure I deleted it. <laughs> Did that just work? Hey, I'm severely lethargic. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. Or is it? However, while you might appear to be a heartless witch, I'll admit that I'm not that innocent myself. I've done some things too that I wish I could take back. Things that if other people knew I did them, they would probably want to stay away from me. And it's really hard for me to tell which one of the two of us is the evil twin and which one is the good twin. Ugh, again with this? There is no good or evil twin. There never was. You are just crazy. Well, of course good and evil are just fancy terms for real psychological conditions. That's not what you're talking about, though. You are talking about malevolent forces that are not from this world, steering our thoughts and conditioning our actions to perform their will. You're thinking of an unnatural power that is sinister at its core that we must succumb to and obey, no matter how hard we try. I will admit that it sounds appealing to be able to rid yourself of all guilt, but you've got to wake up and take responsibility for your actions. Look at you, sounding all reasonable. Seriously, I think you're insane. I think you know you're insane. Let me ask you something. Are you even sure if you ever made it out of that psych ward? Are you sure you're not still in there and none of this is really happening? I hate Mondays. They remind me of the psychiatric ward. Everything in the school is so similar to that other place. The floor plan, the color of the doors, the tiles, but most of all, Lunch in the cafeteria is exactly the same only on Mondays. No. No, I am sure. I'm pretty sure all of this is real. Oh yeah? Prove it. I will. Soon. But first, we are going to play my game as I am the one in charge. You see, I know what you were doing the last time we spoke about Dad in the fire. You tried to keep me in a perpetual state of epistemic ambivalence, of knowing and not knowing what really happened at the same time, letting reality exist in all its possible states at once, as per quantum superposition. So maybe I do know what happened, maybe I don't, because the reason for the fire must be one of the stories you told me, I just don't know which one. But then it occurred to me, you told me three different options from a set of four different possibilities. You said you started the fire, then you said you started the fire because I told you to. Then you said I started the fire by myself. Well, I think you conveniently left out secret option number four, where I started the fire because you told me to start it. And then you, because you're a nematode, hid in the basement and your whole idea backfired on you when you were the one who got burned and your idea ended up killing Dad. You made me do things that I didn't want to do, and you made me be responsible for our dad's death, and that is why you were the one in the hospital. With the burn scars, and I was the one trying to kill you because I was so angry at you. You caused me mental damage so heavy that I didn't want to deal with it, and so I blocked it all away and forgot you even existed. Today, Jessica and I spent the day researching hypnosis. We want to know how come I can't remember anything related to my sister. I have no memories of her. The only remaining question for me is why? Why would you ask me to start that fire? She laughed at me in a disrespectful manner. Oh, 
You're so adorable. You still feel bad for dad's death. How are you so smart but haven't figured out that part? Now, granted, there was no way I could guarantee dad would die in the fire. But that was my goal, to kill him. Why? Because he was insane. Are you seriously telling me you don't remember what he used to do to us? He was out of his mind. He was the one who thought one of us was evil even before we were born. Does that strike you as sane behavior? That comment, more like a joke, actually. I doubt anyone really believes it. I mean, why else would someone tell a person who's about to have twins that there's always the chance that one of them will be the good twin and the other one will be the evil twin? But now that it's in my thoughts, it doesn't sound so far-fetched. Not anymore. He was the one who convinced Mom that there was something wrong with one of us. And when we became aware and started developing a conscience, he started guiding us down that path too, forcing it onto us. He would constantly test us to try to figure out which one was which. Come on, baby, turn off Grandma's pacemaker. Just press these buttons here on the computer and Grandma's pacemaker will stop making your heartbeat and Grandma will die. Is that what she wants, Daddy? Oh no, baby, of course not. You're lying. Nope. Dad wouldn't do that. Oh, my dear sister, you're so naive. Did you do it? He somehow found the program to disable Grandma's pacemaker. Dad was so excited that day. He was really speeding on the way there. Couldn't wait to see which one of us would do it. When I was five years old, my dad would sometimes take us to visit my grandma. The road to my grandma's house was very sinusoidal, so he would speed up when approaching the crests building up the expectation as if the car would take off and fly. You kept running off chasing squirrels, so he asked me instead. She was asleep, but I watched her chest stop moving up and down as she stopped breathing. I saw her muscles completely relax for the last time. This is just one example, the one that broke me the most. He did that a lot, always when mom was not around. I'm sure she knew nothing about it. But one day, I thought it was just enough. He had to be stopped. Oh my God, you killed grandma. Dad killed grandma. I was five. I had no idea what I was doing. But then you made me start a fire to kill dad. Sounds to me like you did know what you were doing. I am a victim. Dad turned me into what he already thought one of us was. I was protecting us. No, you're not. You could have come to play with the squirrels with me. Instead, you did to me what Dad did to you. You got off easily, and Dad let you get away with it too. But he wouldn't let me off the hook. That's why... That's why what? Finish that thought. That's why I wanted to kill you. After I saw you on the news being accused of murder. After all I went through, you still turned out to be evil? Killing people and not even knowing about it because you're psychologically split? And giving blood to save those two guys? No, you can't be both. And you can't be evil. You didn't deserve that title. I earned it. I am the evil twin. I don't know. I think I'm pretty evil too. And then finding out from your diary that dad kept blood to save us and you were taking it? Blood from the good twin. That was for me. My only chance to clean myself from the inside. Oh, so now you believe the blood has a certain magical power. You're all over the place. You can't have it both ways. Let me ask you a question. Imagine you're robbing a bank at night and you're coming out of the building with the bags full of cash and on the way to your van, you run into a couple of civilians. What do you do? Easy. They can identify and testify against me. I kill them. What's this got to do with anything? We're gonna play a game. We're gonna find out right now which one of the two of us is the evil twin for sure and which one is the good twin. In front of her, I took three syringes out and I showed all three of them to her. Two of these syringes contain rattlesnake venom. If you don't know about rattlesnakes, the eastern diamondback is considered the most venomous species in North America. The bites are always potentially fatal depending on the amount of venom they inject during the bite. But here, we already have the perfect amount. Wasn't even hard to get either. Snake Farms will sell it to you. It's expensive, but hey, your dad paid for it with cash I found in his bedroom before he went broke. Oh yeah, I then remembered I hadn't told her what happened to her dad or her mom. She started asking for the story, but before telling her, I injected myself a full dose of one of the vials. She looked at me like I was crazy. Then I took the other vial and injected her too, despite how much she kicked and screamed. 
There, now the two of us have the same chances of survival. The third syringe has the anti-venom. There is only enough for one of us. I'm going to walk out for a few minutes. I'll leave the syringe inside the diary at the park down the road. And you and I are going to have our own battle for survival. Only one of us will walk out of this basement on time to save themselves. Or, hey, maybe none of us will make it out. Who knows? The only thing I will ask of you is that whoever makes it out writes down on the diary what happened and who they are. That's why I am leaving the anti-venom hidden inside the diary. Promise? She looks skeptical, like she didn't believe me. She didn't promise right away, and I didn't panic much because I knew she would, so I gave her time to think about it. You know, you don't kill the civilians. Are you crazy? How is that evil? That's just unfair. How is that their fault? Why does their life have to end? You are the one who messed up. You decided to break the law. You took the risk of being caught. You executed your own plan, which wasn't perfect. If it had been perfect, you wouldn't have been caught by civilians. But you were caught. You're the nematode. You are the one who failed, not them. They were just at the wrong place at the wrong time, but only because of your failed plan. They had nothing to do with it. If anybody should lose their life now, it should be you. You lost. You're done. Game over. You should be embarrassed you suck at crime. So now you die, not them. You. If you don't want to deal with the consequences of failing, you kill yourself. But wait, aren't you the most important person to yourself? Well, of course you are. No one is more important to you than you. Killing the civilians is easy, like you said. Oh, but killing yourself over a mishap? Over practically nothing? Over something so easily fixed? Now that is evil. That's why I injected myself too, and you and I are going to settle this once and for all. You did some things to me and the ones I love, and I've done some things to you and the ones you love. Then I told her in detail what I did to her adoptive parents and Craig. And somewhere in there, we both started feeling the side effects of the injection in our bodies. That's when she knew. That's when she started trusting me because she felt her body start to malfunction and she saw mine react in the same way. This is when she finally promised to write down in the diary whatever happened. Do you see it now? Do you feel how this is most certainly real and not my hallucination while still being locked up in the psych ward? I never had to convince myself that I'm not crazy. I just had to convince you that I am. You tell me if I am still in the psych ward. And on that note, I walked out. And I came here. And I will leave the third syringe inside the diary here at the park for one of us to find, like I promised her. And when I go back, I will release my sister, I will set her free, and she will have to fight me until the evil and good twins are revealed before our eyes. So, yes, diary, this might be my last entry. You may not hear from me ever again. Wish me luck. Love, C. Dear Diary, I made it out. I fought my sister and I won. We were both flushing, itching, getting hives and starting to swell on the face. Breathing required a bigger effort as the venom reacted and tried to consume our bodies. Even though she put up a bigger fight than I was expecting her to, I was not going to let her win. I punched her in the face so many times and so hard, I knocked three of her teeth out. She was fully unconscious at this point, but I did not preoccupy myself with finishing the job. The snake venom would do that for me. Plus, I didn't know how much more time I had left. I didn't want to waste any more of it. I came here as fast as my limp and disorientation allowed me to. I found the diary on the bench and injected myself with the antidote. I think I'll be okay. I'll be okay. As always, evil wins over good. Good just does not have the balls to do what it takes to defeat evil. And evil survived. I survived. I knew I would. I am the evil twin. Love. Make me
Dear Diary, it's important for you to understand that my plan worked exactly as I expected. First of all, I didn't buy snake venom. I bought snake anti-venom, which I then proceeded to inject into my sister and me. On its own, it will give you reactions similar to allergies, but it won't kill you. It will certainly trick you into thinking you'll die, though. That's all I needed. The third syringe really had cyanide, which I made from apple seeds like the one I used to make the deadly apple muffin. You see, in my mind, this game would help us identify which one of us was the evil twin and which one was the good twin, because if she had been the good twin, rather than fight me, she would have let me just walk out and save myself. If she had done that, I would have gladly stepped out and would have knowingly injected myself with the cyanide. But she didn't do that. And when I saw in her eyes how serious she was about getting out, I knew she would kill herself. That's when I started feeling an out-of-this-world energy, a strong surge of willpower so persuasive I couldn't ignore. It convinced every muscle in my body to try to stop her. I tried to fight her as hard as I could to save her. Of course, I could have also just revealed the information I just told you, but I didn't because I also thought she could have one last chance to prove herself as the good twin if she suddenly reached for what she thought was the cure, had a sudden rush of clarity, and decided to come back and save me instead. But she didn't do that either. She must not have been the good twin after all. Or perhaps she was just a human being afraid of facing eternal disappearance, perpetual vanishing. Anyway, despite her lethargy, she may have won the battle, but not the war. And now, should I crown myself as the good twin? I really did give it my all to try to stop her from taking her own life up until the point she knocked me unconscious. Although, the true good twin would have told her the truth in case it helped save her life. That would have been more important to the good twin than preserving the game. But then again, wouldn't the true good twin be doing more good to the world by ridding it of the evil twin? Even if it cost her the title? Is the world a better place now? Have I made it better now that my sister is dead? Are all angels by definition exempt from evil? I guess all I can do now is pretend like I was just born today, and then work hard every day from now on to try to earn that title back. When my sister is found, there will be an investigation, but I chose this part because it has a surveillance camera. Everyone will see that she injected herself and that I found her and tried to give her CPR, then called the police. All I have to do is say that she told me what she did to her parents and to her ex-boyfriends, and that she couldn't live with herself anymore. They'll fill in the blanks in my favor. I'm tired. I need medical attention. And Jessica's waiting for me. I will tell her what I have done, what I did during these last two weeks. But maybe this time I'll tell her myself. I will not be needing your services anymore, Diary. You have too much gossip on me. I can't afford to keep you around anymore. Jessica will be my confidant if she chooses to stay with me. I love her so much, and hopefully she'll love me enough to forgive me and help guide me down the path to deserve my twin title. I'm really looking forward to putting all of this behind us. I'm going to bury you into the ground now. Maybe one day you'll Jumanji your way out and help a different girl set her feelings and her memory straight. I think next year, when January 2016 comes around, things will be different. I think it will be a good year, with great things to come. I can already tell. Love, Cuthy.